uh, with me. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Let's hear from our uh, first scripture lesson, which is Exodus 20, and select verses for us to hear the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, Any joys or concerns further that we can share before we enter into time of prayer? Yes, so we're thinking of uh, Ruth Ann Hudson who lost her sister Rachel this week. May God's peace be with the family. Well, just as I pulled into the churchyard, I got a text from my grandson, Daddy. He has been in Florida playing on a special team. He was he was selected to go down there and play. And uh, he said, we are coming home now. So I asked for safe travel for Daniel and his family. Yes quite a distance to travel for Daniel and his family from all the way from Florida. So safe and travels for them. Yesterday, the home game, and had a, had a really, they lost, but our concern is with Daniel. <laughs> and he did, a, he did, a, he did well. Good. Job. good. Thank, you. Thank you. Martha? Thank you. Thank you for sharing good news about Shane's improvement. We we thank the Lord for his blessing. Of course, we continue to have uh, Kathleen in our prayers. And um, also uh, Martha's friend, Joan. Let us pray, shall we? Almighty God, we offer our humble thanks for all that you have given us, for all spiritual and material blessings that we have received from you, for keeping us in your faithful promises by your grace. In you we have had our being and moved and had our breath. Not only is your word the light and life for this time, but you have given us everlasting life in Jesus Christ, 
We praise you and thank you for your eternal and steadfast love. By your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit, help us grow in your kingdom. Let, us, let the good work you began among us continue. Grant us repentance and faith, healing and wholeness, holiness of lives, service and mission. God, we pray for your mercy and grace on all who are suffering from this ongoing epidemic of disease. Today we include in them president of this country and his family. Meanwhile, mercifully deliver them and show them your power. Heal our land, O oh God, by your word and deliver us from evil. We pray for those who grieve, uphold them and sustain them, we ask you. Send your comfort and your light to Ruth Ann, her family, Rachel and her family. We pray, O oh God, for those who hope in you for healing. In the name of your holy son, Jesus, heal and make whole, we pray. We thank you for always hearing our prayers. We pray for the, your blessing on this community, its governments and schools. O oh God, enable us to be a blessing through your presence in us. We pray for this church that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Help us fulfill your call to witness to Jesus Christ. And all these we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 21. And I'll be reading from verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce of the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the, pr the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, some years ago, I had a chance to preach through the entire Gospel of Matthew over some seven months. And afterwards, someone asked me if there had been any surprises as far as what I had learned. And the answer came to me soon enough. It was who the detractors were for Jesus. Who opposed and persecuted Jesus the most? It wasn't the Romans. It was not the so-called so sinners. Time and again, it was the religious leaders of all people, the priests, the scribes, the Pharisees. Now, don't you find it odd that people who should have known best opposed Jesus the most? Jesus, for his part, did not really endear himself to them either. 
One of his final acts was to go into the temple in Jerusalem, overturn the tables of the money changers and drive out the merchants uh, there, calling the place a den of thieves. They were not making money for charity, they were making money for themselves, but certainly doing it under the uh, guidance of the temple authorities as their, uh, as their aux auxiliary. Jesus even said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. Meaning that they will eventually kill him, but he will rise again in th on the third day. The cross of Jesus Christ, in a sense, was raised where a generation of religion was laid waste. There is a lesson here for all of us. Merely having a religion is not our calling. These people who opposed and persecuted Jesus at every step, they all claimed faith in God. Some of them were sincere too, like the person we come to know at a later time, Saul of Tarsus. They were indignant that Jesus claimed to be equal with God. But they could not have been more misguided despite their religion. As Jesus pointed out, they had a history of persecuting, even killing the messengers of God. They would even persecute and kill the very Son of God, Jesus. How could they have missed the mark so badly? In our Old Testament lesson, we see the finest example of what their religion was based on. And it wouldn't be wrong to say uh, our religion, our faith is based on the Ten Commandments. They are words that stood for thousands of years, solemn, grave, magnificent words. It begins by saying, I am the Lord your God who delivered you out of Egypt. You will have no other gods before me. It goes on to say, you shall not make yourself an idol. How true, how could anyone make a visible image of the God who made the universe? We agree with the psalmist, the law of the Lord is perfect, giving or reviving the soul. God himself wrote these words on stone. They were not typed on Snapchat. The problem was not the Ten Commandments or other laws of God. The problem was the human heart that did not change despite the laws and the commandments. How many of you know that the law does not always bring you personal changes? One day, a young man came to Jesus and asked about eternal life, and he professed to have kept and observed the commandments since his youth. Jesus, who, by the way, loved him, said, go and sell your possessions, give them to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven, then come and follow me, this young man, went away in sadness, the scripture tells us. We may not blame him harshly. Nonetheless, the truth stands that he loved his riches too much to give him unreservedly to the will of God and the call of God, even though he was a sincere and religious person. We should realize today that merely knowing the laws of God, or even just fulfilling the letters of the laws of God, and even a dose of sincerity does not equal being in the truth. History tells us that believers in God not only made mistakes at times, but even committed evil. Paul, before his conversion, persecuted Christians. Nazi Germany was overwhelmingly Christian in demographic terms. We know from experience that those who bear the name of Christians don't always walk in the way of Jesus. Today I am warning all of us that being in religion does not automatically lead us to do what is right, nor does it always keep us from committing evil. How can we then be in right relationship with God. First of all, 
Remember that whereas previously God has given us a set of laws, now God has given us a person. And we are to get to know and get to know this person, Jesus, the Son of God. The difference between Jesus and all the prophets before him was that the prophets delivered and related the word of God, but Jesus was himself the word of God. So he said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. I am the life and the resurrection. I am the light of the world. So the first question we can ask ourselves is, do I have a set of laws and principles that I live by, or do I know and follow a person? It doesn't matter what our stated position or principles are. They could be the Ten Commandments themselves. What matters is if we know the person whom God has sent because he is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Do we know Him, follow Him, and abide by His teachings? I had a roommate while living on campus to attend seminary. He was not someone who could quote the Bible like I could. He was a gregarious fellow, a big fellow. But this, this man professed to ardently love Jesus, and after living as his, as his roommate for a year and a half, I can testify that he was not lying. I saw how his love of Jesus was a dynamic force in his life. It undergirded his life inside the church and outside the church. For two years before coming to seminary, he had poured himself into a group of troubled youths in downtown Dayton, Ohio. After seminary, he went back to the same place and has since led a vibrant church in a neighborhood wrecked by poverty and crimes. Secondly, not only did God send a person, but that person went through a deep, profound suffering. The Son of God did not merely spend a few years here on earth as if on a vacation. He was given a bitter cup of suffering. He died on the cross, shouldering pain, agony, and despair. His blood was all poured out. Is it possible for anyone to face Jesus in his cross and not be personally affected by him in some way? In August of 1955, a 14-year-old boy named Emmett Till was brutally killed in Mississippi after being accused of offending a white woman. His mother famously insisted that the casket remain open during the funeral because she wanted the world to see, she said, what they had done to her son. Her son. The death of Emmett Till did much to pierce the conscience of a nation. One person attending a rally for Till in Montgomery, Alabama was Rosa Parks, who shortly afterwards became an igniter, one of the key igniters of the civil rights movement. You have not fully encountered Jesus until you have encountered his suffering, his wounded hands and feet, his pierced side. In the previous covenant, people slaughtered an animal and sprinkled its blood, dashed its blood against the altar. Like a lamb that was slain, Jesus suffered and died for the sin of the world, and he was raised to life on the third day. Our conscience would have remained guilty if not for the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus. His faith and obedience was perfected through suffering, and he gives life to all who turn to him, who otherwise who would have died in sin. Paul said that the message of the cross 
is foolishness to the irreligious and a stumbling block or scandal to the religious. But for those who believe, it is the power of God towards salvation. Repent. Believe in the Savior who died for you and be born into a new life as a child of God. In 1 John chapter 4, there is this marvelous passage. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. This person, Jesus, also connects us to God in ways that a mere religion does not. Because Jesus called himself Father, even a word that we could very well translate it into Daddy, Abba, Father, because he and God were one. He loved God with all his heart, and God loved him like his only son. And Jesus has taught us to pray and say, our Father. He repeatedly taught us, taught God as our Heavenly Father. Believing in Jesus, therefore, means living with God as our Heavenly Father. And what an awesome thought that is. God the Father may not be accommodating in the same way that perhaps our earthly father was or in ways that we sometimes expect. However, the truth is he is every bit as loving. Jesus taught us that God's love does not trail human love. What does our religion or our faith look like today? Are we living under some ideas and principles that are connected to God, good as they may be, even the commandments in the Bible? Or do we know this person, Jesus, whom God has sent for us for, to be our way? Jesus, the crucified, the Lord. Remember Peter, who in the end was simply asked by Jesus, Simon, do you love me? Remember Paul, a strict Pharisee who renounced it all for the sake of Jesus. Remember Mary, who scandalously poured onto Jesus an entire jar of perfume worth someone's entire yearly salary. Professing to have religion still lacks something until person whom God has sent lives in us and we live in him. Abide, call on him and make your confession. Abide in him and let his words abide in you. You will know the love of God, the love of the Father, that is, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let's together celebrate this holy sacrament. It is Jesus himself who calls us to his table, all who earnestly repent of their sin, all who love him, all who are seeking to live in peace with one another. Today, let us Pray in silence. Let us confess ourselves to God 
in prayer of silence together. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now let me get the communion liturgy for us to use. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth, to make disciples of all nations. And today his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit and renew our communion with your church through the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your holy son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. For those joining home from home, this is your time to receive the elements. Friends, body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. As you go, may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.